if you were to take two radios, turn them up full blast, two different stations, plaster them on your ears, and keep them there for 24 hours. I'd like to know what you're like afterwards. Add the visuals to that. It's not easy. He couldn't talk very much. It was really bizarre. He ended up getting a bus ticket out to California, and we lost him. It was Christmas night, it was cold, it was rainy, and one fellow, his, I remember the guy's name was John, and he asked him if he had seen my son. And the guy said, no, he didn't, you know. And he told him, he says, his mother's here, she's from Louisiana. She came here on Christmas to find him. He was so impressed that I had done that. To paraphrase Nora Ephron, she said, when mental illness strikes a family, it's as if someone threw a hand grenade into that family. It's like somebody took a bomb and exploded it in, in your life, and you have to go on. I would look for him get up at the crack of dawn and go to Venice Beach and, and walk and walk and walk. I always think now, he is someone's son. He is someone's son. And, and his mom doesn't know where he is. And society is not helping her at all. People with mental illness need help. And they should not have to go years and years and years and sometimes never get help. For a long time, people didn't have any idea what was really causing schizophrenia. They thought that it was because someone was evil and possibly possessed by the devil. We've set the whole mental health system back two centuries, not even one century, two centuries, to the place where we always locked people up in insane asylums, in jails, and in prisons who were ill. You might be homeless, you might wind up in Twin Towers, you're in and out of court, the condition just keeps getting worse and worse. A lot of times in order to get treatment or get money, they have to sign a document. Well, if they're paranoid, they're not going to sign that. The system handcuffs you so that you cannot help them. It's an illness of the brain, like an illness of heart disease, diabetes, cancer, etc. It's an illness. That's what these mental illnesses are, nothing more than a chemical deficiency in the brain. It's not a death sentence. It's something that's recoverable. The new medications that they're coming up with now are phenomenal. Recovery is real, and recovery does happen, and there are real stories of recovery and hope. We know that with help and with treatment and with love and support from families, that recovery is possible. It's real. We don't care for those we love, who will care for them?